and let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who makes it so that we no longer are slaves to fear or sin or death or our own passions or Satan, but we are your children, each of us a child of God, together the community of God, the community of Christ, called to share one another's burdens as you have shared and taken on ours. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God's grace and his mercy and his peace be to you from God the Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Good morning. Have you ever felt like no one hears you? I already heard some laughter there. Brenda, you're not allowed to answer this question. In fact, I'm guessing right now that there's probably a lot of husbands who are kind of mad at me right now because they're being stared down by their wives as I ask this question. And I will confess on my part, it is probably a very well-earned reputation. Brenda will be talking, and I'm in another world. I'll be reading, uh, I'll be watching something, reading something, doing something else. I might even be sleeping. And the next thing I hear is, did you hear me? Or, there's another question. So what do you think? <laughs> I personally prefer the latter of those two questions. What do you think? Because... What do you think allows creativity on my part? <laughs> you see, the first question is just a simple answer, and being honest, the answer would be no. But what do you think? I can think of all kinds of things. And if I play it just right, and I don't give a relevant answer to the question that she's doing, then she'll restate it. And then I'm in the clear, because I know exactly what to answer at that point. Of course, now she'll probably never ask me that question, what do I think again? She'll just start with the first one. But the kind of not hearing that I'm talking about today <clears throat> is much different. It's the kind that makes you feel all alone, even in a crowded room. The kind of not hearing or not being heard, that comes out as groans, even inward groans, the sound of silence, the kind that speaks volumes with the eyes, with longing eyes, fearful eyes, tired eyes, the kind that can be produced by thankless labor, oppression, abuse, and what seems to be an endless burden that only offers hopelessness and despair. And it even clouds, even erases the dreams for what we once longed for. I know that some of you have gone through such pain and burden. And I'm sure that there are some of you who are going through that even now, going through this kind of trial. It could be at home. It could be at work. It can even be with religion. It might be an abusive spouse, or parent, or caregiver. It could be a tyrannical boss, an impossible, legalistic path to try to find a fulfilling life, joy, happiness, even salvation. And if this is you, or it has been you, then you are probably feeling a lot 
like the children of Israel did a few thousand years ago. Let me explain from Exodus chapter 1. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not jo know Joseph. Joseph is the one who brought his family, the children of Israel, Israel known as Jacob. And this Joseph is passed on, and the Bible says this new king, he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel, so they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. And if that weren't enough, Pharaoh then had every male child to be killed at some point in time. We don't know exactly when, but every male child to be killed. There wasn't much that the Israelites could do except groan, to groan out, cry out, and hope, just hope to be heard. The generations that followed Joseph, they weren't a nation, not yet. They were essentially a huge family, a huge community who had been in Egypt for 400 years, enslaved and oppressed. 400 years. In the Bible, that seems to us to be like just a blip because it goes from Joseph to Moses, 400 years. But just consider the fact that the United States of America is only 244 years old. Add another 156 years to what has transpired in the history of our nation, and you get the people of Israel in Egypt. Or you could think of it this way, 400 years ago, is when the Mayflower landed at Plymouth Rock. Enslaved. And what kept them there was fear and oppression. Oppression in the harshness of the Egyptians and, honestly, in the desert that surrounded them. And you hear that later on from the Egyptians when they're in it. Fear was for their own survival. They cried out generation after generation, century after century, and they must have thought that they hadn't been heard. But they were. And so are you. So are you. God heard their groaning. God saw the people of Israel. And I love this last part. And God knew. And God said through Moses, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. And and I like to think of it this way. He's saying, I am Yahweh. He's giving his personal name. The name that he didn't even give to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He's saying, I am Yahweh. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will deliver you from slavery to them. 
and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I am Yahweh, your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. <clears throat> God didn't just say it. God did it. He didn't just hear their cries. He acted on their behalf. He brought them out from under their burden. I love that language. Brought them out from under their burden. I want you to think about that phrase, that idea. It's not just to make the burden more bearable while still being underneath it. It is to get out from underneath it. Just as like a weightlifter who would be struggling to do a bench press and then the spotters take the weight from him or her and the lifter is out from underneath it. The weight is about to crush them, can even kill them but then the spotter takes it and gets them out from underneath. In the case of Israel, Moses was the spotter that God had sent. But it was in God's timing. And when Moses raised his rod, the children of Israel became the nation of Israel. And they were freed and released from their burden. But there was still one more burden. And it's the burden that we are all born bearing. It is the weight of sin. The weight of sin is just as enslaving. In fact, it's even more oppressive and brings even harsher punishment. All that abusiveness that we were talking about, the tyranny, the legalism, all those things that can bring us such despair and heartache in our lives, it's all the result of of sin. That's the origin. And if 400 years seem like a long time, consider the thousands of years since Adam and Eve fall into sin in the garden, that the weight of sin cast its burden on the whole world leaving the world to do nothing but to cry out for mercy and freedom from the pain and the suffering of sin and death. And it might have seemed as though God hadn't heard. The promise of a Savior, a Deliverer, a Rescuer, a Messiah... It had been made so long ago, generation after generation went by, century after century, but God heard. And he sent more than just a spotter. He sent more than Moses. He sent his own son. He sent Jesus to share our burdens, to take the burden off of us by, where, by bearing the weight, the entire weight of the sin of the whole world upon himself. For all sin, for all people, for all time. And Jesus didn't just lift up his staff, but Jesus himself was lifted up onto a cross. 
Jesus didn't just come as the deliverer. Jesus came to be delivered into the hands of sinful men and to suffer death on a cross. To bear the full weight of the oppression of sin. Even sacrificing his own identity before the Father so that we could have a new identity. So that we would no longer be slaves to fear, slaves to sin, but instead would be the children of God. Purely by God's unconditional love and grace. Children no longer trying like that weightlifter, no longer trying to bear the impossible burden ourselves and yet being afraid to let go. Laying there, ready to be crushed. But now we are children who trust Him like that spotter and the weightlifter to get us out from under the load that we cannot bear. You know what we call that? We call that faith. That's faith. And that same faith leads us as His children to remember that He hears us. He hears you. Even when it seems like no one else does even when the wait is long. If we know that He has brought us out from under the harshest, most oppressive, most despairing burden of all, and even gives us life in the midst of death, then we know that whatever burdens we bear in this world, He will release us from, deliver us from, in His timing and in His way. You know, maybe that release is through reconciliation. Maybe getting out from under the burden is is through a reconciliation that is bathed in confession and forgiveness. What a blessing that is. Sometimes maybe that way is a release and a new start. Maybe sometimes that burden is ultimately removed from us, removed from our brows, and it's replaced with a crown of righteousness when our Lord calls us home. But no matter how, or no matter when, God does hear you. And He puts spotters and Moseses, I don't know if you say that right or not. He puts those folks in our lives, His servants, who are in our path, whom He can use to bring us out from under that burden. And that's so important for us to remember because if we feel like there isn't, then that just plays into the wrong hands. Because perhaps the greatest burden we feel when we feel no one is hearing us is despair. Despair. And what that despair is, is really a tool, a temptation of Satan that he uses to destroy God's children and their confidence in him. But be assured, the Bible tells us, that God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted, even in despair, 
beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And one day, to be free from it. That is our faith. And Jesus is that way. He is the way and the truth and the life. And he hears you. And he has and he will deliver you and rescue you and share your burdens. Amen.